Greetings, this is Charles Darwin, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Kentucky coffee tree. Here's some leaves of a male Kentucky coffee tree, and it only has male flowers that produce pollen, and I think this is the only one in town, so this is a frustrated bachelor right here. But from out of town, I brought a pod from a female tree, and as you can see from these pods, that they are in the bean family. Now, this one was planted, but what plant geography attempts to do in the study of wild plants is to explain which ones grow where and why in the wild, not when they are planted by human beings. Now, usually what happens is that scientists explain these patterns in terms of large-scale uh, landscape patterns, especially of moisture and temperature. So, for instance, it's cooler in the north, it's warmer in the south, and that's why you get different kinds of trees growing in the north versus the south. Also, it tends to be wetter in the east and drier in the west, which is why you have different species of trees and other plants growing in the east versus the west. I'm speaking to you now from Oklahoma, and it's rather hot and dry here. If you want to find sugar maples, go to the north and east of Oklahoma, even though we do have a few of them here. But even on smaller landscape scales, you can have interesting patterns. So up in Tulsa, for instance, you'll have one kind of oak tree, the post oaks, which like it hot and dry, on the west side of a mountain, and on the east side of the mountain, where it gets the cooler morning sunlight, you'll find red oaks growing there. So, not only on the landscape patterns all over the continent, but even on smaller patterns, such as different sides of a mountain. Ah, but that's not all there is to it. Ecologists also explain patterns of which trees live where in terms of history, and in particular, the Ice Age. In several Ice Ages, the most recent one ended somewhere around 14,000 years ago, and as the glaciers melted and retreated north, some of the trees that had migrated south started to migrate back north to take up places where perhaps they had formerly been before the glaciation. Now, they each took their own route, and uh, so sometimes you would get patterns that cannot be completely explained in terms of current conditions. And another thing is the effects of human beings. Now, Native Americans, we usually think of Native Americans as not planting trees or influencing the entire landscape, but that's not entirely true. They started a lot of fires, and they also uh, caused natural fires to spread. And this may have had an effect even on the entire landscape, so that in some places, trees and other plants, such as prairie grasses, might have dominated uh, because of Native American fires, whereas they otherwise would not. Which brings me to an interesting story about this species, the Kentucky coffee tree. Let me open this up and show you what some of the seeds look like. Here's one of them, right here. Now, Native Americans, as it turns out, used these seeds as game pieces, sort of like checker pieces for playing games on the ground. And they would take these with them. They wouldn't necessarily take the whole pod, but they would take the seeds with them. And once in a while, after they were finished playing, they would lose the seeds. The seeds would germinate, and you would get a patch of new Kentucky coffee tree growing in a place where it had not been found before because of people losing their game pieces in the dirt. Now, is that a strange story or what? Well, there are many stories that are even stranger than that in the history of what grows where, the history of life, the ecological history, and the evolutionary history of life. This is Charles Darwin, Tally Home.